Now, the last question is a scenario based question which we have been waiting for a very interesting and most commonly asked. So let's understand that particular question as well. Okay friends, so here is our scenario based question. What happens when you type www.google.com in your browser for the first time? So basically here the, here the interviewer wants to understand whether you understand the internal working of your, of your networks, like what happens behind the scenes. And always remember that it is asking for the first time, which means that the caching mechanism which happens generally after the first request has no, is not considered here. So you have to take it as if you are doing it for the first time. So there is no caching involved in this workflow. If it is not like this, then you could ask the interviewer whether we should consider the caching or not. So this is not the all the steps. Actually, there are eight steps. I could not cover it in this board. So in the next four we'll discuss after these one these ones. So the number one thing when you type anything on your browser, for example, www.google.com, the first thing is which happens is your DNS resolution. Your browser wants to know that what is the IP address of this domain name which uh, you know which we are looking for. We need the IP address in order to reach the Google web servers. So for that, it searches for the DNS server and sends a DNS query to the DNS server and says, hey man, can you tell me what is the IP address of www.google.com? Now this in itself is very, very detailed and complex, could go very in depth. We have created an in-detail video of DNS, but it is sufficient for the interviewer to understand that you know this. So the browser sends DNS requests to the DNS server to get IP address for google.com. DNS server returns the, returns the IP address of google.com. So this happens. So this is, once you get the IP address back, that is called as, the whole process is called as DNS resolution. You have now resolved to the IP address. The second step is TCP connection. Now, you, what you will do, the browser has the IP address. So now browser will try to establish a TCP connection with Google web server at the IP address it has got at step one. And as, as we were discussing previously, TCP is a connection oriented protocol. So the first thing which happens is you have a TCP three way handshake. So you will have a SYN, SYNAC and ACK. These three steps will happen in the handshake and then only the connection will get established. So the sender will send, uh, the browser will send the SYN packet, then the, you know, the web server will return the SYNAC packet and then sender will, uh, the, uh, the browser will again acknowledge sending the ACK packet, acknowledge. Synchronize, synchronize, acknowledge, acknowledge. Once this three-way handshake is done, your TCP connection is sorted. Step three is TLS SSL handshake because we are typing HTTPS. It is a secured website. It is a TLS SSL secured socket layer. So it is, we have to, we have to decrypt this, right? We have to understand and we have to establish trust with the Google web server. So what happens in this, you know, in this uh, handshake is browser and server perform TLS SSL handshake to establish secure connection. And generally you can watch my PKI video, public key infrastructure. There we have gone into the detail of how this handshake happens. We have focused on this workflow. So here, in, in essence, what happens is a browser needs to understand whether that web server is a legitimate web server. So the web server sends a digital certificate, which is signed by a certificate authority. We will not go into those details in this, but if you want, you can watch the video. But in, in essence, this TLS SSL handshake happens. And after that, the trust is established and the session is established after this particular handshake. At step four, the HTTP request finally gets triggered. So the browser now with all this done and dusted, now there is trust established. Browser trust the web server, the web server trusts the browser. So there is mutual trust. The HTTP get request is sent to the Google requesting Google's web page. So these are the four steps. Now let's understand step five, six, seven, eight, which are equally important. So at step five, after HTTP request, the server processing will happen because the request has now arrived at the Google server. So now the Google server will process the client request and potentially involve database queries, application logic, some server side scripting to formulate the response. So once this processing has happened at step five, step six is the key, which is the HTTP response where Google finally sends the web page to the browser. It looks like a journey, but it happens in 
in in a split second at step 7 the rendering of the page happens so now browser has got the http response but then it will render it and it, it will render it it will uh, you know it will parse the content the html content which has come from the web server and then it will display it on the browser and finally at step 8 the caching will happen so the browser will cache whatever it can whatever is allowed will be cached for example static images for example the digital certificate which uh, which came at first place all those kind of things which could be cached will be cached so that the next time this request goes it is much faster so that's why uh, for the first time we discussed right so if, if it, it is not asked then you should be asking and telling that whether the caching is already done or not if the interviewer has not mentioned so this is a scenario based question guys and whatever i have you know whatever steps i have laid out you can you know you can customize it you can you know you can do the storytelling you can try to answer it in your own way there is no right or wrong you just have to follow the structure and there are some details which I have skipped because obviously we are we are targeting these interview questions for everyone. So, for example, if you are going for a developer or a, or an interview for a data engineer, then they will not expect you to know so much about networking. So, in that sense, even this much is way more than sufficient as per my knowledge. So, yeah, and obviously these five are not enough. Okay, <laughs> but I cannot answer everything on this whiteboard. So what I ask you now is you mention it in the comment what interview questions were asked in your interviews, what interview question you think could be asked in your future interviews and if possible also give the answer so that we can all learn as a community. If you like this because I have done it for the very first time guys and I have never ever discussed these kind of interview questions but I have been getting a lot of requests. If I get good response, if I get enough likes on this video, then I can do new series for interview questions and answers for different areas, for data, for cybersecurity, for networking, for infra, for cloud. I can do that. But it all depends on your response because you are the king. You will tell me what to do. Okay. So yeah, guys, I hope it was useful. So until next time, keep learning, keep sharing all your knowledge. And yes, keep hustling. Bye for now.